Hello and welcome to the WIHS Journal, Public Affairs from 104.9 FM. I'm Paul Kretschmer. On today's program, we have a guest to talk about the safe use of power tools during the wintertime outdoors. Hi, I'm Chris Kaiser. I'm president of the Outdoor Power Equipment Institute. And you have some tips for people during the winter months as far as taking care of the property and uh, with an interest toward keeping everything in tip-top shape as far as it's possible with the equipment that, that, that is available from your membership. Absolutely. A um, lot of tips. A lot of folks got into their yards this year uh, due to this terrible COVID business. Lots and lots of new plantings, and so there's a lot of things you can do to protect that investment. Okay. So could you tell me... Um, the sorts of basics that a person might start out with if they haven't been engaged heavily with that kind of work on the property in the past where they can get a, a solid start and feel comfortable with it before they move on to something that may be more sophisticated. Sure. Once it freezes, you know, leave your plants alone. Stop trimming them. Stop the grass, if you will. Um, remember, plants need water. A lot of plants need water throughout the year, especially new stuff, new plantings. You've got to keep them hydrated. So keep an eye on if they're getting rain or snow. Um, and evergreens in particular, you're going to want to hydrate them. Now, again, it's, it depends on where you are in the country. Um, I'm in the mid-Atlantic, so we get, you know, times of good weather. But if you're in Duluth, you're probably not going to put down water. So um, if you're able to, make sure that the plant is hydrated. It'll get them through, especially new plantings, it'll get them through the season. The other thing you really need to know is keep an eye on weakened or dead or dying limbs. Um, what happens with snow or ice, that weight, can shatter a limb or break it off. Um, what you want to do is get good, clean cuts. I represent fire equipment guys. We have snow throwers and chainsaws. Um, you want to get good, clean cuts on that sort of thing so it doesn't harm the plant or make it uh, more susceptible to insects. And so you want to get those clean cuts uh, on shrubs, on trees, um, in advance of snow or ice, that heavy stuff. Remember, salt may be really good for your walks and driveway. It can be very challenging for plants, uh, and in particular with new stuff. If you're using a snow thrower, right, mark where you're going to throw your snow. Um, you don't want to be using it in or around the plants because it can do a lot of damage. Uh, and one shout-out on a snow thrower. Uh, I actually got mine out today. We're expecting some weather this weekend. Um, never, never, never put your arm or hand in a chute. Never operate the machine or work on the machine um, when it's running. So there's a little, little tool and so those of us in the power equipment business, never, never work on the machine when it's running and never put your hand in a snow thrower chute. Okay. Well, does a person generally have a pretty good idea of um, how far their snow blower will throw so that they can, as you mentioned, guide it properly so it doesn't throw excess snow on an area that really doesn't want it? Right. Um, now, snow throwers comes in all kinds of shapes and sizes, and so depending on the size of your machine and if it's a single stage or two stage, those things will all affect, frankly, how far it can throw your snow. Um, a two stage has an impeller and an auger. A single stage has an auger. That won't throw the snow as far. Now, if you get, a, I have a big thirty inch unit, um, two stage. I mean, mine will throw it into the neighbor's yard, and that's something you don't want to do. Um, and so part of it is just understanding your machine. Um, you can adjust the angle of the, the throw, and you can enjoy, adjust um, the distance. Typically, the machines will have controls for that. So part of that is just understanding the machine. Um, and is the snow wet? Is it heavy? Is it dry and fluffy? Well, all factor into that, but that's a really good point. If you're throwing heavy snow, in particular heavy wet snow, onto a evergreen or a holly that's already got laden with p snow or ice, you can do a lot of damage. You can throw a lot of additional weight onto the plant and hurt it. Uh, and you certainly don't want to make your neighbor angry, but uh, the machine will do an awful lot of work for you. But you want to be mindful of that and um, sensitive to your neighbor's needs. In terms of use of your equipment, if, if, a, if an event is going to be lasting for a number of hours, is it something you wait for until it's done dropping, or do you go out periodically to clear it from time to time so that it doesn't get stacked up so deep or maybe heavy or maybe even frozen if the temperature changes dramatically? Good point, good point. I typically will go out during the snow. Now, if, I'm, if you're only going to get an inch or two, it's easy to wait. But here in the mid-Atlantic, we don't get much snow. But if we get it, it's often through a, mid uh, a nor'easter, and you'll get a lot. Uh, and so it's certainly easier to deal with if you do it in increments. And so I'll do it every few inches um, and clear that off. Plus, as you said, you're, you'll deal with maybe temperature gradients or if you're going to get additional moisture. Um, the 
taller the snow, the more challenging the job. But again, the machines are designed to do the work. Um, and again, depending on the size of the machine, um, again, I have a pretty good sized machine, but they come in all, you know, 20 inches, 28 inches, 24 inches, 30 inches, 40 inches. There's all s- different sizes and power, right? You can get big machines. Again, they'll do the work. Most are self-propelled. Um, but these are all things you should learn and know before you need it, right? So the other thing you need to know if you're going to use a snow thrower, it's the wrong time to find limbs and dog toys in the garden hose. So if you're anticipating snow, get outside and look and decide where you're going to throw your snow. Um, if you're going to do the driveway or walks, clean them of debris. You don't want to drag. You don't want to have that debris getting into the machine. Uh, so you can solve an awful lot of problems by simply preparing and planning. Snow, like a hurricane, is usually you know in advance. Make sure you have the fuel. You make sure you have the right fuel. Make sure you have fresh fuel. Um, that's something else you don't want to have to do after the snow falls. Make sure the machine is running. Run it in advance of the snow. So, again, the key to outdoor power equipment is preparation. It'll be there. It'll do the work for you. But you have to know that it's running. Uh, and the key to understanding your machine is to know it in advance and uh, read your owner's manual. Is it best to keep the, the machinery that you're talking about inside the garage or some protected space before you actually hit the driveway and the sidewalks with it then? Absolutely. If at all possible, outdoor power equipment, whether it's battery, uh, electric, or gasoline, should be stored in a, a clean, dry area, right, and free of debris. When you, after you use them, clean them up. Most are set up so that you can, like your lawnmower has a port on it for a garden hose. Keep them clean. Um, keep the salt off of them. Um, and store them, like you said, if you can, when you can, in a garage or a dry area. Um, these machines should be kept dry if possible. Again, most of it, most snow throwers are, uh, the bigger ones are engine equipment. Uh, so what's key to them is um, keeping them dry if you can. Obviously, they're obviously made for snow and wet. Um, but in particular, fuel. That's the lifeblood of an engine, obviously, oil, air, air filter, and gasoline. Gasoline today has ethanol in it. Ethanol absorbs water. So old gas oftentimes absorbs water, phase separates, no good. It's called stale gas. Rule of thumb today, buy it and burn it. Buy the gas you think you're going to need and burn it, or if you're going to store it for any length of time, stabilize that fuel. It's cheap. Stabilize you can buy about anywhere. Um, but fuel just will stale now. So the key to any engine equipment nowadays, um, especially seasonal stuff, recreational stuff, limited-use stuff, uh, buy and use fresh fuel. Your membership is consistent of, uh, of what uh, firms then, sir? We've got 100 member companies, um, Honda, John Deere, Toro, Yamaha, Kawasaki, Aarons, Briggs & Stratton, all the folks, Steel, Husqvarna, all the people that make uh, chainsaws and string trimmers and mowers and portable generators and snow throwers, UTVs, golf cars, um, power equipment, outdoor power equipment, utility vehicles, and nowadays power supplies, so small engines, and battery supply makers. A lot of equipment now is available in battery because of lithium-ion technologies, even from big zero turns to string trimmers and chainsaws. A lot of battery equipment now available. So even if you've owned equipment for a while, is the dealer that you've dealt with in the past still most likely to be the best source for up-to-date information as you, as you either maintain what you have or maybe look forward to obtaining new equipment to replace the, 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 the rugged but well-used and, and, and well-appreciated uh, uh, machinery you've had in the past? Absolutely. Your dealer's going to be the best source for uh, guidance on that particular manufacturer. Uh, they'll have the latest equipment, if you will, and the best uh, service. Thank you very much for the time that you've made available for me and listeners here in Connecticut and Western Massachusetts at this time of the day, sir. Appreciate very much your cooperation. You bet. Good to be with you. Our guest today was Chris Kaiser, president of the Outdoor Power Tools Institute. For further information, call us at 860-346-1049. That's 860-346-1049. The opinions expressed are those of the participants, not necessarily those of the staff or management of the station. I'm Paul Kretschmer on the WIHS Journal. Public Affairs from 104.9 WIHS.